we have two integrals on the spot. The first one is the integral of square root of inverse sine x, and the second one is the integral of square root of sine x. Yes, both of them are non-elementary, but it's okay because we can use special functions to work them out. And as always, please pause the video and try them first. Okay, hopefully you can still have a time to try them out. I will work out this one for you guys, and mu prime math is going to do this for us. So be sure you guys watch both parts. Okay, for the integral of square root of inverse sine x, let's begin by a classic u substitution that u equals to square root of inverse sine x like this. I want to isolate the x right here, so we will square both sides and then take the original sign on both sides, and we get x equals the original sign of u squared like this. And then of course we differentiate both sides, we can get dx equals the derivative sine is cosine, the input stays the same, but don't forget the chain do multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we get 2u right here, and of course we have the du as well. Now, this integral in the u world will become the integral. This is the u, so let's put that down. dx is all that, so we multiply by 2u cosine of u squared, du. Okay, how can we continue? Well, I really don't want to multiply the u and u to get u squared because I noticed this part, we can actually just integrate, and this part, we can just differentiate. So, we'll proceed by integration by parts, and of course, let's do it with the di setup. So, let me put down d and then i, plus minus on the side just to get ready, and we are going to get the following. Differentiating u and integrating to u cosine of u squared. This right here is just pretty much that. Yes, so we get sine of u squared. And if we differentiate the u, we get 1. So, you might be wondering, can we just do integration by parts in the beginning? I think so, but at some point you will still have to do some good stuff, so one way or the other, up to you. Anyway, from here, of course, we can come up with the answer. Here is the first part of the answer, and we will have u times this, u times sine of u squared, and then, of course, minus, right, because this right here, when you multiply a row, and this is a minus, and we have another integral, and 1 times this, we still have the sine of u squared, and this is still in the u world. Now, this is done, and this right here is actually non-elementary, but we can use a special function for it, namely the first near integral, and that's the sine version for it. So, we end up with u, sine of u squared, and the answer right here is minus, let me just tell you guys what this is. The first thing integral, the sine version, so you just put down s, and the input right here is just u, right? Remember, when we have sine of u squared, we get s of u, and don't forget the constants right here and right here. For the inside, we have to multiply by the constant, square root of 2 over pi, and on the outside, we have to multiply by square root of pi over 2. So, this right here is that, and be sure you guys check out my other video for the explanation and the details for the special functions. So that's pretty much it. In the end, we just have to get back to the x world, and let's do the usual business. Well, u, which is just the square root of inverse sine x, so let's put that down right here, and we have the sine of u squared, and notice that's just nicely equal to x. So let me just put that in the front. So that's the first part right here. And of course, we can continue. Here we have the minus and the square root of pi over 2. And we have s. And this is just the name of the function. This is not an integral symbol. And we have the parentheses, this constant multiple, square root of 2 over pi. And again, the u is square root of inverse sine x. So I know it looks crazy, but this is it. And in the end, of course, don't forget the plus c. So I'll just add the plus c right here. And this is it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome mu prime f for the integral of square root of sine x. So we are going to do the integral of the square root of sine x dx. And this is a non-elementary integral. So instead of our standard integration tricks, we will use some special functions to help us out. In particular, because we see the square root of a trig function in the numerator right here, it looks like the second special function is going to work the best. Now we want to start thinking about how we can transform this sine into 1 minus m sine squared of something. 
maybe you first think to use a substitution. So if we think of some random substitution like x equals pi over 4 minus 2u, where u is our new variable, this might be a useful substitution because when we differentiate, we get that dx equals negative 2 du. Because negative 2 is a constant, we can pull it to the outside of the integral, which leaves us with the square root of the sine of whatever we put on the right side here. As long as this right side is a linear function of u, we can basically just substitute it in for x and then try to turn that sine into whatever we want. So let's start thinking about what we could substitute for x in order to make that work. You might first think about the angle sum identity for sine. So for example, sine of a plus b would give us sine a cosine b plus whatever. And the problem with this is that we see a sine and a cosine, but our result here just has a sine squared, which is not exactly what we have. So we might start thinking about a few other identities. Maybe instead of sine, we look at the cosine. For example, if we have the cosine of 2 theta for some angle theta, well, this is actually equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And this is exactly in the form that we want, 1 minus m sine squared of some variable. So if we can turn this sine x into cosine of 2 theta, then our problem will be solved. We can just take the integral. So let's start by figuring out how we can turn this sine into a cosine. And the substitution that will help us for that is x equals pi over 2 minus u. Because we know that the cosine of some variable is the same as sine of pi over 2 minus that variable. So if we plug this in, we'll get dx equals negative du. And then our integral becomes the integral of the square root of sine pi over 2 minus u. And then dx becomes a negative. We'll bring that to the outside du. But remember, this sine of pi over 2 minus u is just cosine of u. Remember, our final goal is to turn this into cosine of 2 theta. Well, if we want to do that, we can just say let u equal 2 theta. Theta is our new variable. Then du equals 2 d theta, and we can plug all of this in. So our integral gets negative the integral of the square root. We have cosine of 2 theta now on the inside. And then our du becomes, we'll bring the 2 to the outside, and then d theta. Now we notice that we have a cosine 2 theta on the inside like we want. So we can turn this cosine of 2 theta into 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. And now we have finally turned our integral into exactly what we want. The square root of 1 minus m sine squared theta d theta. Which means we can use this special function right here to give us our answer. We're going to have the negative 2 out front. And then the integral of the square root of 1 minus 2 sine squared theta is going to be e of, and then our input variable is theta, and instead of m, we have a 2 right here. So theta and 2. And now all we have to do is get back from theta to x. We can start out by looking at the fact that u equals 2 theta. And therefore, theta is going to be 1 half u. Now if we go back one more step to x, x is pi over 2 minus u. And that also means that u is going to be pi over 2 minus x. So we have 1 half of pi over 2 minus x, and then 2. And our final step is going to be to distribute this 1 half through everything. So we get negative 2 e of pi over 4 minus 1 half x and 2 plus c. That is our final solution. So. Remember, the way that we got to this answer was by looking at our square root here, seeing the similarity with the special function, and then starting to think about trig identities. With this clever substitution where we put something into the angle, we turned it into a cosine, and then the double angle for cosine, which gave us the inside that we want, so we can solve it just like this. Okay, hopefully you guys all like this video. If you do, please make sure to check out Mew Prime Math's channel because he has a lot of interesting topics for you guys, including differential equations, linear algebra, and also calculus, of course. So, be sure you guys go take a look, and if you guys like his content, then please consider to subscribe. Thank you guys so much, and as always, that's it!